Hi, my name is Sierra Drew, and this is my 2019 climb of the Sierra High Route, a year that saw 230% snowpack. What is the Sierra High Route? It's 195 miles of cool, crisp, clean, clear mountain air, 115 miles of cross-country traversing, and 38 mountain passes. The High Route isn't for everyone, but if it's for you, I hope you go out there and get it. Also, just so I know whether or not I'm supposed to keep making videos, please subscribe and hit the bell notification below. As of this video currently, I have no subscribers, so... Well, I guess that's that. Join me as we tackle the high route together. Hey guys, my name's Sierra Drew, and I am the first person to do the Sierra High Route 2019, the year that saw record snowfall over 230%. Uh, what is the Sierra High Route, I guess you may be wondering. Well, because I'm not that articulate, I went ahead and Decided I'd just kind of write write out my thoughts on what the what I think the high route is. The high route is a 195 plus mile journey through some of the most remote regions of the Sierra Nevada mountains. It comprises around 80 miles of trails and a mind-numbing 115 miles of trailless, labyrinthine canyons, cirques, rivers, and high mountain ridges. The route rarely drops below 10,000 feet and requires exceptional route finding skills. Now, no technical gear is required, but in my opinion, extensive mountain experience will give you a better hope to finish. Currently, it's estimated that around 15 people a year finish it, considering there's 300 people a year that climb Everest, that's 5% of people who climb Everest, I guess. That's about the number of people doing the high routes. If you want to be alone in the mountains, this is probably for you. Uh, July 5th out of Bridgeport, I was the first permit that was issued for the high route. So, you know, you, you kind of think that you're going to be able to like turn this thing into like some sort of cool video, but the truth is, is man, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. There's very few things in this world I'm more proud of. Than that right there, Sierra High Route. You know, you go through maps, and when they start out, they look all nice and pretty, and then when they're all over, they just they become like these tattered rags with notes. You can tell the ones that were hardest, because those ones, even if you were to look at it, you wouldn't even be able to see the route anymore. The truth is that the Sierra High Route is the greatest adventure you'll ever undertake. I don't recommend doing it if you haven't climbed fairly extensively throughout the mountains. Uh, if you don't have uh, great comfortability um, with class four scrambling with a pack. The route doesn't typically have you go through class four, class five technical type of climbing, it's true. However, in my experience, the odds of you getting into a situation or two almost every day where you'll have some sort of class four, class five move is pretty normal. Very rarely will you go a day where you don't have to make a decision uh, about taking the, the, some, some route that's maybe a little bit icier than you thought, a little bit higher than you thought, a little bigger of a drop than you thought. I would like to say this. Today I have crossed rivers, what I consider to be class four mountain ranges, miles of sun cups and talus, endless miles, it feels like endless miles, of 
rocks, swamps, mosquitoes, back country, brush whacking. Um, I climbed the wrong pass, I think, on three different occasions with a GPS because I just didn't look at it regularly enough. Coming up on the um, top of Feather Pass, exiting the Ursine Lakes region, <clears throat> the many bear lakes. Look at that. Yikes, should have checked my GPS. I climbed exactly, literally the wrong pass. So I have to descend 500 feet and go a mile and a half around. That, that sucked right there. So, all right. Hate it for me. The high route is just one of those things that, that as you undertake it, I want to stress this right now. Planning is essential to the high route. And by planning, I mean planning every aspect of it. So you have to plan on moving if you're not a fast hiker. I am not a fast hiker. I'm a very slow hiker. You can see by my spot link uh, below you can see my 10 minute marks and I'm telling you you can see I'm not a fast hiker so what I do is I tend to hike slow I take very few breaks over 10 minutes long and I plan on hiking 12 hours per day now some days I hike 10 some days I hike 15 but 12 hours is kind of my minimum because I know if I can go a mile and a half an hour for 12 hours, I know I'll be able to knock out 15, 17 miles. And at that pace, I also know that I do around 1,200 vertical feet an hour. One of the better things to note about your experience with the high route might be, how many feet per hour do you climb with a 30 to 40 pound pack? From my experience, a 40 pound pack doing about 1,200 feet an hour, you're gonna be doing great. So that's 1,200 feet an hour, or you know 2.3 miles an hour walking flat kind of those are your metrics there to try to gauge how far you think you might be able to go on a daily uh, aspect so uh, when I got started into canyon country my wife and I we went to Crowley Lake for the 4th of July and we really just had this uh, kind of this this experience together that was just uh, it was wonderful um, if you haven't had a chance to be up in Mammoth 4th of July, it's a wonderful experience. There's a great parade, and it's a, it's, a, it's a ton of fun. And so then she drove me up to Bridgeport the next day, and, uh, and I went into the ranger station to get my permit, and it was July 5th. Now, this year we saw over 238% uh, snowfall this year, so July 5th of this year probably looked a lot like May 5th of most years. And uh, boy, the, the, the gal, the permitting station, she issued me the permit, but I didn't know how much she really thought I was going to actually, uh, how far I was going to actually get. And, and to be quite honest, I didn't know how far I was going to get. I knew that, knew that I, was, I was going to have to hit my little magic chopper button on my spot device before I was going to quit. I'll tell you that right now. My, um, my desire for finishing this thing was pretty absolute from the beginning. Uh, I have very much no quit mentality. I, I don't mind failing, but I do mind quitting. Okay, quick thought. If I complain to the camera about whatever on this trip, is it complaining because nobody's here to hear it? Or is it just, you know, venting? I don't know. Another one of those questions. Leave that up to you. But all I can say is, is boy, my feet are wet. And uh, my knee hurts. And I'm tired. And I miss my wife, my kids. <laughs> so uh, I think there's a big difference between the two. So when she dropped me off at Horse Creek uh, Pass, so right at Twin Lakes, Horse Creek's your first pass, I tell you what, I was I was chomping at the bit, I was raring to go, but I had that kind of thing where where everything kind of hurts and everything kind of aches, and you know you're kind of wondering what's going on. And Horse Creek Pass, that is the very beginning. Uh, I'm excited, feel good, um, anxious to get this kind of this first couple of days under my.
my belt, get my hiker legs going. Um, yeah. So. And I'm just gonna tell you the story. I guess, you know, <clears throat> if you wanna know me really, really well, I guess it's my first YouTube video, so nobody really knows me. But, uh, what's in the jug? What's in the jug is electrolyte water, a little bit of pre-workout. I'm kind of a weird mountaineer in a lot of ways because I like to mix a lot of bodybuilding and triathlon training along with uh, mountaineering training. I think they go hand in hand as far as the nutrition goes. So, a lot of times if you see me having like protein shakes in the mountains or having fat bombs because I'm on keto, uh, a lot of that's just because um, I think that having good nutrition is a good idea. So I do a lot of supplements, a lot of omegas, vitamin Ds, all that sort of stuff. So big into the nutrition side of things. Uh, so getting back to where we were. So Canyon Country. So normally this is Chapter 5, but I'm doing it as Chapter 1. That first hike coming out of... Uh,